We're in the final three episodes now. Into the Breach brings us closer to Tantus. We also get to see the side of Omega the series has been building come into the forefront. We open on Tantus again. Instead of a more traditional score, ominous tones punctuate the atmosphere. A male doctor follows a medical droid into the vault. The droid is the important thing for the story, but the male cloning doctor may poke a hole in a small theory that I had. Check out this video after you finish this one. Eva has Omega's doll out in the open. Emery's clearly softening. The baby Cad Bane kidnapped got to keep theirs as well. There's also the matter of another doctor calling Emery out on her lax approach to handling the subjects. Emery snaps back at her, saying it's her show to run and she's going to do it her way. This is Emery seeing the subjects as kids. Her snapping at the other doctor isn't just about keeping control. It's also about Emery never having been trusted in a leadership role. Now that she has it, she realizes it's not the one she wants. Emery has a lot of personal demons coming to the surface. The writers are giving us a lot without sidetracking the core story. Cut to the batch on some platforms that are very reminiscent of Bespin. Rampart's moaning about being dropped there, he's moaning about the plan he doesn't even know, and he's pretty much whines the entire episode. It's all totally within character and played for comedy. Echo meets up with them. He wasn't a starting member of the team, but he's every bit a member of the Bad Batch. He needs to be part of the ending. He's also a clone freedom fighter with an uncertain future. Leaving characters we see later in the overall timeline out of this final mission adds greatly to the stakes. Rampart offers more clarity on the location of Tantus. The location isn't unchartable. It's a closely guarded secret. Echo provides a stolen Imperial shuttle and a set of access codes. The codes provide access to an orbital space station simply designated 003. I don't know if there's any significance to this number, but the station is orbiting over Coruscant, deep in enemy territory. Their plan puts Rampart in play as an Imperial officer. He likes the idea of returning to that role, but he's insulted when the stolen uniform is that of a captain when he was a vice admiral. Echo tells him very coldly he got demoted. I think it would have hurt Rampart less if Echo just straight up punched him in the face. It's funny how much Rampart is holding on to his arrogance after being scapegoated, disgraced, court-martialed, and imprisoned by the Empire. On Tantus, Omega's attitude with Emery hasn't changed. She's much more defiant and cold in their interactions. When Emery says the subjects in the vault are well looked after, Omega calls her out on it. Omega has done a lot of growing up in the short amount of time since she left Tantus. Emery doesn't believe her own words. More and more self-doubt is creeping in. Omega steals some kind of medical tool from Emery's tray. My mind started to wonder if Emery noticed that the tool was missing, but let it slide, either consciously or unconsciously. Omega is really stepping up as her role as soldier, leader, and protector. It was an inspiring moment for sure. My only worry now is that she doesn't know the direness of the situation. Obviously, she has to do something for herself. I hope her open defiance isn't answered by punishing one of the other kids. These kids are all force sensitive. Confirmation on Omega's ability is still unclear. I don't want to see direct manipulation of the force being how the kids get out. The franchise can't make using the force super easy for everybody. It's also important to keep this a clone story, not a Jedi one. That's part of the reason Omega's ability is being kept ambiguous. Along with the captain's uniform for Rampart, I assumed the Bad Batch would have stolen some TK Trooper uniforms. No, nope, they just painted their armor black. It is noticed by by the deck officer who questions Rampart, but Rampart uses his knowledge and that famous arrogance to get into the base. The best joke of the episode is when Rampart wants Echo to call him Sir. Even while they're acting undercover, Echo won't do it. The Batch learns they can't steal the coordinates. Only the intended ship receives them. Echo decides to sneak aboard the science vessel bound for Tantus. He'll have to hack the ship's systems and disable a physical proximity alarm. This will allow the Batch's stolen shuttle to be attached to the vessel and piggyback through hyperspace. These infiltration and planning scenes are rapid-paced. I love the ever-changing scenarios. The Batch are all thinking on their feet, every member contributing to the ideas on the fly. Everyone in sync, no arguing. The batch Batch meld best when on a mission. In the vault, Omega uses her stolen tool and pulls some panels off the wall. She finds an access shaft the prisoners could use to get out of the vault. She accidentally makes some noise and Dr. Scalder almost catches her. Omega's coolly defiant. The plan was getting down to the wire. Hunter was going through with it, even though it looked like it wasn't going to happen. This is equal parts the Batch having no other choice and their faith in each other. Even Crosshair tells the hysterical Rampart echoes on it when Rampart wants them to abort. The end's closing in on us. The showrunners were merciful, and we didn't have to wait a whole week to see if the Bad Batch's plan works. With Echo being the only one stowing away on the Imperial vessel, I have a strong feeling his heroic act is going to become a heroic sacrifice. 
The series won't end without losing some heroes. Omega is going to go through even more than she already has, and we'll be right there with her. Here are my predictions going into the penultimate episode. Echo is not going to make it out. He'll be discovered upon landing. Omega will get the subjects into the walls, but will need the batch to really escape. The Vault's crew will be on the hunt for them, and Emery will buy them some time. Not a full-out open defiance at first, but dragging her feet and maybe some misdirection. We will get an answer on Omega's metachlorian count, and I do believe it's going to be high. There's going to be an incredible battle inside Tantus. They're going to find Wolf in a bad way after he let the batch go. Crosshair will get a face-to-face -face with Hemlock and will get more information on what was done to him. I also see this being a pivotal moment where Crosshair could execute the man, but with having him defeated, he'll just walk away. Something is going to happen to all of the Bad Batch for Omega to be able to move on and grow as a character. That may not happen in the series. I think we have a lot more loss to face, but I don't think it's going to end on a complete downer like the Clone Wars did. What do you think is in store for the Bad Batch? Drop your theories in the comments. Make sure you check out this video next for more of my thoughts on the Bad Batch.